Warning, this video will contain spoilers for the game known as Xenoblade Chronicles 2. If you don't want any, leave now. Or if you don't care, then stay. I'd love to have you. Now let's get into it. What's up everybody? Welcome to my Poppy slash Torah guide. I am going to explain exactly what Poppy is, how her and Tora are the best tanks in the entire game and how exactly to use Poppy Swap and Tiger Tiger because they can be a little challenging sometimes. And I'm also going to explain how the affinity charts can affect their playstyle. So, the first thing that I'd like to cover is like I said, how amazing Tora and Poppy can be. And they are great tanks. Tora is an HP sponge. And because Poppy is his blade, she just is an amazing assist. Now, Tora has his arts. He has his affinity chart, which I personally like to buff to be defensive primarily. Although... I can see where evasion and dexterity could come into play. But anyway, we're going to get off that. And next, I would like to talk to you about the accessories. Essentially, what I put on him is primarily just HP stuff, some strength, just to kind of give him a little rounded stats. And so he can do at least a little bit of damage rather than just being a strict wall. And as for the pouch, I find it to be kind of useful. Um, it's necessary for Tora and Poppy's affinity chart. It's necessary for everybody's affinity chart at some point. But, I mean, Poppy has the roly-poly maracas. Those are her jam and those are really what you're going to want to focus on at least for the second and third row of affinity chart on her so yeah i mean that's as far as i've gotten with the affinity chart i haven't created too much trust i don't play with them very often and i keep dying at the stage that i'm at in the game i'm a little under leveled eh, it's good for a challenge though so i can't be too angry about it And right here, I'm just going to show you everything, everything that I've done. There are, there's, so the first one is right there. You're going to want Roly Poly Maracas for that. And then I feel like I showed it just a second ago, but this one right here, you're also going to want Roly Poly Maracas for, and it is very, very important. So just a little pro tip for you guys. Now. Let's get on into the actual video. So here we are at Poppy Swap, and this this is the hardest part of Poppy that I found. So essentially, what I found to be the best thing is this little game called Tiger Tiger right here. And what I recommend is just making sure that you go through and when you play it, do your best not to get hit by literally anything at all. If you finish the stage with 100% air, you get an amazing bonus worth 10,000 points, plus some ether crystals, and it's just all good. The second medal that is possible to get is collecting every single ether crystal, and it is extraordinarily hard, especially if you're going for not getting hit at all. And the third one is getting all the treasure chests. I recommend getting all of the treasure chests that you possibly can, as well as not getting hit. You don't have to worry about killing every enemy like I am right here. In fact, I find it the easiest way to actually get hit, worrying about every single enemy. I just, I like to clear them out every once in a while, but I don't recommend it. Um, there's a fourth medal that can be unlocked 
And I personally have never gotten it. I feel like the way to get it is by getting all three other medals, and I'm sure it will net an amazing score. But like I said, I just haven't gotten it. I'm not that good at Tiger Tiger yet, <laughs> even though I've played it for like four or five hours straight, and it's it's a ridiculously hard minigame, guys. I just... It's still, it's still hard for me. But yeah, essentially, like, you're just gonna wanna play Tiger Tiger over and over and over again. There are a whole bunch of modifications for Poppy that I'm going to get into as she is a robot. Um, I'm gonna get into those in just a second and show you guys exactly what they are, what they do, and how they work. Um, they're definitely not the easiest things to get a hold of, like a hang of. But if you play Tiger Tiger enough, and you get all of the chests, which I recommend, you will actually get the modifications for free rather than having to get a whole bunch of ether crystals and paying for them. Which is very, very nice. Because some of the late game modifications can be ridiculously expensive. So as you can see there, I did complete the level. I did not do too great, although I didn't do too bad either. So I can't be mad. Um, although I do want to show you guys, I want to show you guys one of the medals that is possible to get. Um, and it's going to be collecting every single treasure chest. And yes, it is hard. And yes, it will take a lot of patience if you're willing to do it. But it is totally 100% worth it. It's just sit back relaxed enjoy playing tiger tiger which is personally one of the most frustrating games that i've ever played but i promise if you do it and you just stick with it eventually you will get amazing rewards and you will get so good at it so guys i just want to cut in really fast and show you what it looks like when you get 100 percent on poppy swap and I did this on stage two. This is bar none the best I've ever done. Or not Poppy Swap, excuse me, Tiger Tiger. This is bar none the best that I've ever done on Tiger Tiger. And actually, I'm just going to insert a picture. But it's ridiculous. So like I said just a second ago, the best possible thing you can get is... That first one right there. The second one is the ether crystal. The third one is the treasure chest. And the fourth one is perfect. And all those little icons at the bottom are just from when I got like all the different treasure chests and things. So don't worry too much about that. I just did a perfect game, guys. <laughs> That's so amazing. I've never done that. And I did it on camera. All right. Anyway, I'll see you guys back in the video in just one second. So after after you guys have played Poppy Swap about a million times like I have, and you get good enough and you get all the rewards down in order to just like get decent stuff, it will take a lot of time, as I mentioned. But once you've done it, you can finally head into Poppy Swap. Also, I meant... I meant Tiger Tiger, but anyway, we're just going to keep moving on. Um, there are a whole bunch of things in Poppy Swap that you can change out on Poppy. And I'm going to go over what they do and how they work. They're, they're, most of them are self-explanatory. Um, although some of them are definitely not. So this energy converter is probably one of the most important things and you'll see me upgrading it here a few times and essentially you're just going to want to do that as many times as possible to get her like her maximum energy as much as possible because these different cpus and ram upgrades and different cards and cores and things they're going to burn up a lot a lot a lot of energy so i definitely recommend continuously getting as many energy converter upgrades as possible and then spending ether crystals on upgrades later as for the roll cpus 
like I said earlier, I like to use Poppy as a tank mod. Um, her and Tora are amazing damage sponges. So I like to keep tank mod 3. There's also healer mods. There's attacker mods, striker mods. Um, and then there's tank mods that I use. So there are two types of attack mods. There's striker and there's also a muscle mod. Muscle mods will increase base strength. So what that means is your arts, your blade arts, and your driver arts will be increased depending on what size mod you have, what um, generation, I guess. One, two, three, four, or five. It will increase fairly drastically. And there's also the strike mods, which are dexterity mods, which increase the auto attack damage which I mean I don't find personally useful but I'd much I'd much rather go with muscle mod myself of course there are tank mods as well which are they increase damage sponginess which I'm all about there are ether mods which are healers um, that's what class they are their healer class essentially what they do is they give a boost to ether as well as ether defense. And then there's evasion mods. Oh, and luck mods, of course. So evasion mods, essentially they're just gonna boost agility to the point where you can dodge anything. It's considered a tank class, but if you use agility mo or evasion mods, then it's gonna be a lot harder to draw aggro. So, I mean, I don't recommend it, but I mean, if, if you find a good balance for yourself, go for it. Absolutely. I'm sure it would be very good. And then, of course, there's luck mods, um, and the game explains what luck does. But essentially, it gives a higher chance for them to miss. It gives a higher chance for your stuff to land. And it's just, it's luck, essentially. And I don't like to deal in luck, so I don't particularly use that. Those also fall under the role of healer class. Of course, there are elemental cores as well, which essentially Poppy comes base with an earth core, which is amazing. Um, at least for where I'm at in the game, earth cores are really useful. Although I'm probably going to end up getting her a dark core because I don't have any dark types yet. Um, no dark type blades, so that's just my prerogative. Essentially, all these do is it changes up your specials, your blade, um, your blade arts. It just changes up what they do and how much damage they'll do to specific enemy variants and all that kind of stuff. The next thing that we have are the art cards. And essentially, these will do a whole bunch of different things, most of which are damage reducing so by that I mean if an enemy tries to attack um, there are canceling debuff cards there are um, recharging auto attack cards there's nullifying reactions there's absorbing critical up chance um, back attack arts aggro draw which is what I personally use and then of course there's accuracy up so Essentially what they do is they just modify what your arts will do to different enemies. Alright guys, so a super professional little interruption here. I forgot to go over arts cards, and essentially all that they do is they boost your different attack stats. So there's damage heal, there is knockback resist, affinity extend. Essentially it's just... I would qualify it, I would quantify it as how Poppy and Tora get along with one another. And there's like little stat boosts, like damage heal right here adds 25% chance of restoring 8% HP taking a hit. So it's just stuff like that. Really, really basic little, just nice little boosts. And that's essentially all that it is. Anyway, I'm gonna continue on with the video. There are the special enhancing rams, which I personally really, really love. And they're just, they're really cool. 
So what most of these are, are they're going to be like different beast slayers. So it's going to be like aquatic slayer or insect slayer or beast slayer or all that kind of stuff. Humanoid slayer, blah, 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 blah. And it's going to do more damage per class of enemy. So let's say I ran into some wolves or something. Then if I had Beast Slayer on, it would increase my damage towards those wolves. That's kind of what the special enhancing rams do. Um, for the most part. I mean, there's launch, which will increase damage dealt to launched enemies. There's Titan Slayer. Um, there's different topples, so you'll increase damage done to, to the toppled enemies. Essentially, it's... Other than the affinity boosters... And the aggros, it is just increasing the damage dealt. And it's it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, the final thing that Poppy Swap has, which I have not delved into just yet, is called the skill upgrades. Now, or skill rams. These things seem awesome. And like I said, I have not I've not even gotten enough ether crystals at this point to unlock because I've been dumping so much into her energy. But the skill rams essentially it can boost anything from block rate to evasion to an auto attack to arts to whatever. And in even this one I just saw Increases damage dealt to higher level enemies by 80%. It's called Challenger 5. And it just... There's all sorts of these things in the skill ram. So... If you're really going for a specific build... And you want Poppy and Tora to have a specific type of enemy that they face... Or a specific role on a team like... If they're tanks but you want them to be reflective tanks so that when they guard it attacks the enemy they have reflect damage up right here and it's reflect damage up to 125 percent so if we guard it will reflect 125 percent of the damage back at them just stuff like that the skill rams are totally for specialist classes and it's awesome but they're expensive, so use them very wisely. Anyway, guys, that is where I'm going to end this video. A little bit on the shorter side, although I feel like it was pretty in-depth. If you guys have any more questions about Tiger Tiger or Poppy Swap or even the crystallization, then feel free to go down in the comments and ask a question. I will respond to every single one of your questions. I appreciate you guys for coming out so much and taking your time to watch this and keep hunting guys. Keep, keep the Xenoblade action rolling and I will see you guys in another video. Perhaps the next one will be Pyra. We'll see. Anyway, talk to you guys later. Peace out.